Boy, has it been a while since we last saw this truck on this channel. But before we take a look at what we're doing today, let's take a look at what happened off camera since the last video, which was, holy shit, almost a year ago? Man, I suck at editing. All right, first off, let's address the frame. This truck has a double frame, which you can see here and here. The double frame was a nice option, which added a lot of strength to these trucks, but they also have a tendency to hold on to a lot of rust and debris, which causes the two frames to separate over time. So, to clear that out, I spent a few weekends using this air hammer and long chisel to reach into the frame and break apart all the rust and debris that had built up there over time. And when that was done, I used some clamps to pull the frame back together again. Yes, I know there are probably more professional and expensive ways to do this, but keep in mind that, that this is a restoration for personal use and Sunday driving, not hauling 30,000 pounds of gravel all day. Next up is the sheet metal work. The main part of the body still had about half a dozen thin areas that needed patching, so I took care of that. Nothing spectacular to see there. Something that did take a little bit more effort though, and in hindsight I regret not showing to you, was the floor. The old floor was unsavable. So I just cut it out and replaced it with a sheet of 1 8 inch steel, which was, for the record, wildly overkill for a floor. There are some angles and areas that I don't have completely sorted out yet, but it's more or less all tacked in from both above and below to the cross members, so it's safe to stand and work on. Speaking of cross members, and man am I tired of saying that word on this channel, I also aligned up the transmission and engine and welded in new adjustable length cross members into place. Each cross member has its feet bolted to the frame like this and is then aligned and welded into place. Lining up the engine and transmission is really simple on this truck because the drive shaft is just a straight shot back to the carrier bearing, so it's just a matter of trying to keep everything aligned with itself. Luckily, there are no weird driveline angles to work out with this build. And that pretty well brings us to where we are now. My goal for this year is to have the truck be capable of moving and yard driving under its own power. So. To get us there, here's a list of what I plan to tackle. Today, we're going to look at getting the shifting linkages sorted out. So the issue I have at the moment is that my shifter tower, or where my shifter tower comes up out of the floor, is directly beneath my dash. Uh, and there's no way for me to use the shifter from there. So what I'd like to do is move it back about 14 inches to roughly here or so. So I've got all kinds of room and I can shift no problem. This, hopefully, is our solution. It's a remote shifter made from an old shifter with some square tubing notched out on one side and drilled for a bolt. Through that bolt is a rod with a welded rod end, which connects to the transmission on the opposite end. When it's all together, it should look something like this. Obviously, what this is missing right now, though, is a way to keep the mechanism anchored to the floor while still allowing the shifter to pivot freely. And as usual, it's the scrap bin to the rescue. I think I should be able to part off the shaft of this old jackhammer chisel and combine that with this tie rod end to get the pivoting effect that I'm after. First things first, I need to drill a hole in the shaft to allow one end of the tie rod to fit into it after I've cut it in half. I'm also drilling a hole slightly smaller than the end of the tie rod, um, that way I can get a good friction fit. After applying considerable heat to the shaft and cooling the tie rod in the freezer, I'm able to beat the pieces together for an excellent friction fit. And skip ahead a bit, and this is what we get. My pivot point is sitting securely in the hex shaft, which I have in turn welded to some plate steel I had sitting around and drilled some holes. I've also drilled and tapped the bottom of the shifter to accept the threads in my tie rod so the whole thing can go in together as one solid piece. This is what it looks like, more or less all put together. It functions exactly in the way in which I'd hoped, and it takes no more effort to shift than the regular setup, and there's no discernible slop either. I don't even have all the bolts tightened down, and I'm really happy with this one so far. I might adjust the overall length and position of the shifter once I get a seat and the steering wheel back in here, but that's a quick job that I can just fine tune later on down the road. Of course, the next problem we have to deal with is that I don't actually have a pedal or clutch system yet, at least not installed. This truck originally came with under the floor pedals. You can see the gap where they used to go here, but that won't work with my current setup, so I built this instead. 
The pedal itself is from a Chevy Colorado and the standoff it's attached to is something that I built a few weeks ago in order to get the pedal secured to the firewall and located in the correct position. Originally, the master cylinder for the clutch you see was going to be mounted on the outside of the firewall, like most are, but just by happy coincidence, I noticed that it actually fits perfectly inside of the standoff that I built for the pedal. This means I can keep the engine bay a little bit cleaner and have a little bit more protection for this master cylinder. It will also make mounting easier because now I no longer need to make an extension rod that runs all the way through the pedal standoff assembly. Then with it all assembled, this is what we get. The throw of the pedal seems to match the stroke on the master cylinder perfectly well, and I've attached a small jumper that will lead out of the cab that'll make plumbing it all up later on a little bit easier. And all that's left to do now is just to drill some holes and bolt it up to the truck. Four holes later, and here is the completed assembly installed on the truck. There is no pedal return spring yet, we'll see if we even need one or not, but if you look up top, you'll see where the quarter inch line comes out of the clutch master and exits the firewall. On the outside of the firewall, all that's visible of this install are the four mounting bolts and the other side of that quarter inch line. Eventually, that line will lead down here to the transmission, but if you look closely, you'll notice that there is no bracket on this transmission to hold the slave cylinder. That's because I'm a fool who didn't realize he bought an SM465 with a mechanical bell housing instead of a hydraulic one. But no matter, I can make an adapter that will allow me to attach my hydraulic cylinder to the mechanical bell housing. This is the adapter I mentioned. This one is made from quarter inch steel, although off screen I later remade this out of half inch steel just to help with flex. I used dimensions that I found online and then verified on my transmission to make sure that everything lines up and the plunger and the slave cylinder sits in the proper position. This was also the first part I've ever made in CAD and it turned out pretty well. The slave cylinder fits in here just like so and the whole thing fits onto the truck just like this. All that's left to do now is to plumb in the clutch lines. I'll just use quarter inch night cop for that, along with a soft line here to absorb any vibrations and flexation from the transmission. And for today at least, that's as far as I plan on taking things. I won't run these lines until I have the exhaust, steering shafts, brake, master cylinder, and inner fender all set up on the truck so that I know where all the lines can be run in order to look neat and tidy. In the next video, we're going to put in a totally new brake system to replace the old early remote booster system that this truck originally came with in the 50s. If that's something you're interested in seeing, then there's a subscribe button somewhere on the screen right now, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.